even though it was a required reading in school, but I just didn't. Oh. So I don't know. I read it, but it was in 1984. Okay. I want to reread it. I think I need to read it. Maybe yeah. I'll listen to it on audiobook. That's a Ooh. good one. Yeah. Um, so in 2007, Angel Fire joined Constant Hawk in Iraq for Marine missions. So Angel Fire got Marine, I guess. And the Constant Hawk... Well, the Constant Hawk had more pixels, so it could see in more details. But it still had to wait to analyze the images until after it landed. But the Angel Fire had, like, the live video transmission, so they're kind of competing a little bit. Um... But the two could not be merged still due to, like, relationships deteriorating between the teams and between the military research labs and the nuclear weapons labs. And, like, it being from different military branches further complicated, like, a merger of these two technologies. And, like, this infighting between the Air Force, Marines, and Army slowed down the development process while, like, troops are still dying in Iraq. And it was also very expensive to run both projects. So, well, just to give you an idea of how expensive it was, in 2007, the Pentagon Counter IED program awarded the Air Force $55 million and the Army $84 million to keep Angel Fire and Constant Hawk alive. So it'd be better if they could combine them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike Meerman's which was the staff director of the House Intelligence Committee, tallied up these millions of dollars being spent on both projects, and his committee drafted a classified directive to the DOD stating to stop building these two separate systems and, like, you have to combine them to build one. <laughs> so at least someone had that idea. I think that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. They're doing the same thing separately. And they won't combine. Like, they refuse to work together. Right. Yeah. For many different reasons, but it's just all bad. I mean, the... the... And they have to be told. Yes. They have to be forced to work together. Yes, they do. Um, so the new camera would combine elements of both systems. Like, it would generate a wider view than either system had before, which would be enough to view a whole city, is what they wanted. And it would send live footage to the ground, and it would also be optimized for, like, live Overwatch missions and to analyze after the fact. And it'd have a secondary infrared wide area camera for night viewing, and they wanted it mounted on a drone. And they called it Wide Area Airborne Surveillance, which I think that's the same thing they already called it. But, but after hearing the directive... Uh, senior Air Force officials lobbied the Pentagon for control of the initiative, stating they could mount the new camera to their new strike-capable drone, which was the Reaper. So the Pentagon agreed to give the program to the Air Force, and an internal planning group called the Joint Requirements Oversight Council issued a memorandum that stated like the performance targets that this new camera had to meet. And they were given 18 months to make this, which is like very oh fast-paced. Yeah. And, like, many military officials believe the only organization that could build an unprecedented spy plane in such a short time was Big Safari. Which I guess Big Safari is an Air Force skunk works that develops modified surveillance aircraft, like, often for urgent and classified missions. And their development philosophy is, like, the 80% solution. So they work on an airplane until it's 80% done, and then it gets deployed. And what? Yeah. The logic is that it often takes the same amount of time to do the last 20% as it does the first 80%. So, like, there's a risk in the development, but it's the fastest they can get it deployed. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's unmanned, at least, too. Like, yeah, but 80%. Can we go 90? Like, why? <laughs> no, that's not their philosophy. It's 80%. It's good enough. Send it out. <laughs> yeah. Really? I mean, as it's out there, they can make new iterations. Oh, and help. then they just keep working on it yeah. for the rest. Okay. Probably. Okay, but I still hate it. Right. Yeah. And I guess their informal motto is, those who say it cannot be done should not get in the way of those doing it. So I like that a lot. I like, I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
And unlike other military units, Big Safari doesn't hold open competitions for large contracts. Like, it instead can grant deals to whatever company it chooses at whatever price it wants. And Big Safari has a tradition of bestowing its projects exuberant, like, sometimes goofy names, and this is where the name Gorgon Stare came from. Because, like, you know the Gorgon, right? No. No. It's like, angry, like, Medusa was a Gorgon. Okay, okay, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, so Big Safari typically develops technologies, like, from outside companies, but with this, like, there's no camera that already exists, so they have to, like, will it into being in such a short amount of time. Um, but luckily for them, I guess, a special military lab already had something on the docket that would meet the needs for Gorgon Stare. And it was within DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. I have heard of DARPA. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, a few years before this, I guess, Brian Leininger applied for a position as, like, a PM, in quotes. I don't know why what that means but uh he pitched an idea in order to like get the job so the idea was to improve the camera for the constant hawk and it needed to have the resolution to track individual people which constant hawk could only track vehicles and it needed to cover a wider area than the current technology like the constant hawk could view 30 square kilometers which is like 11 ish square miles but like that wasn't enough to map out the current networks of insurgents um, they said 50% of the vehicles of interest that analyzed tracked left the camera's field of view before stopping somewhere that ground troops could visit. So they definitely need a wider view to drop yeah, that I number mean, down. 11 miles could be 10 minutes, right? Right, yeah. So that's not good enough. Um, and the camera would also need a faster frame rate to be able to track individuals since like, you can change your direction much faster as a person versus a vehicle. So in March 2006, he was hired and he drew up a detailed proposal and his camera would fly at an altitude of 20,000 feet in a figure eight pattern and cover 50 square kilometers, which was like 19 square miles, with enough resolution and frames per second to track individuals. And also needed to be smaller than the other ones to be able to fit on a drone. And DARPA approved the full proposal in November 2006. So, okay. yeah. I'm baffled by seeing individuals from 20,000 feet. Yeah. Like, that's... Crazy. Individuals from 20,000 feet. Right. Like, with enough resolution... 2006? Yeah. Well, it didn't exist yet, but that was his idea. Well, okay, by by the end of 2008? Yeah. Yeah. Well, by wow. 2009, but... I guess, but... Yeah. Crazy. Scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but they called this camera um, Autonomous Real-Time Ground Ubiquitous Surveillance Imaging System. Or Argus is, I guess. And in Greek mythology, Argus is a giant with a hundred eyes covering his head who is tasked by Hera to guard her priestess Io who has been turned into a cow. But I think the hundred eyes is why they... Right. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's the relevant information. Yeah. Um, But Leininger toured the Pentagon in search of a military unit that would fund the concept and take it into battle. And many were unconvinced of its feasibility, just like the other ones. Surprise, surprise. Um, But then shortly after is when, like, Big Safari's task with combining Angel Fire and Constant Hawk... So that was good for him, and in fall 2008, DARPA signed an agreement with Big Safari to provide Argus cameras to the Gorgon Stare program once the cameras were ready. So kind of like all was like perfect timing for this to come up, I guess. Yeah. So in August 2009, the first camera was done. It had almost 2 billion pixels. I'm not going to say the full number. Oh my god. Yeah. Which, that's enough imaging power to spot an object six inches in size from an altitude of 25,000 feet in a frame twice the width of Manhattan. See, now, I don't really know how cameras work, but how is this possible? 
They like stitched a bunch of cameras together to make it like one super camera, I guess. But I mean, the book explained it a little more, but I did it right that time. Yeah, I mean, I need to look into how cameras work, but from 25,000 feet, like, the human eye doesn't even... Right, it can just zoom in so much. Oh. It can zoom in. I don't for- understand that either. Right. But, all right. <laughs> like, it can zoom in enough for it to still be clear. Because usually you zoom in and, you know, it becomes less resolution. You can't really see anything. But I don't really know either. But this is what they made. <laughs> um. So the first four Reaper drones equipped with Gorgon Stare were deployed to Afghanistan in spring 2011. And then Gorgon Stare 2 was deployed to Afghanistan in 2014. And there are also rumors that it's also equipped with a signals intelligence sensor that would allow operators to intercept radio and phone calls, but that's unconfirmed. And in 2015, the Air Force deployed Gorgon Stare to Syria as part of the operation against ISIS. Like, they've used this a lot. Um, but, like, the Gorgon Stare, obviously terrifying. But it's only one of, like, many whammy programs out there. And, like, the Army has been building a fleet of surveillance planes called Enhanced Medium Altitude Reconnaissance and Surveillance System for use in special operations missions outside of declared war zones. Which, I didn't know they could do that outside of (laughs) war zones. Yeah, what are the laws on surveillance? Right, we'll get to that. Isn't it frowned upon? Yeah, I think it's frowned upon, but I don't think it's... Like a rule no one follows, maybe? Yeah, I don't think there's a actual repercussion. I mean, if you're over some other country, though, they could shoot you down if they see it, I guess. But at this point, they're so high up, too, you can't see them. You don't know they're there. Mm. So they're so high up. It's like you can't tell. Mm. Right. I hate this. Yeah. Um... And as of 2017, the Army has deployed four of those for use in Africa and South America, but the specifics of what they're being used for hasn't been disclosed. So. Mm. And then the Air Force is talking about replacing the Gorgon Stare with something that can track people more effectively in forests and in urban settings. It's like. In forests? Gonna... What would they need for that? Thermal imaging? Also, yeah. why can't they use this for something? Like, drug trafficking or murder? Like, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay, I mean, okay. it, this is the military using it. They're not going to investigate right. murder. It already trick. It always trickles down. They're right. like, oh man, that guy just literally slaughtered a bunch of people. Well, someone will figure it out. We have the whole thing on film, but eh, we don't really want him to know we have this, so... Right. Yeah, we'll get to it being used outside of the military. Um, but yeah, these are like just the projects that are known. So like imagine what they're working on that's not being disclosed. Also, this book was written in 2019. So imagine what more there is now. Like all the te- mm. new technology. Also, it's never been disclosed how many lives this technology has saved or, like, its actual impact on the battlefield. So we can't even assess if this technology is, like, worth the privacy concerns. Like, is it really? Yeah, no, because they have a fun new toy that they want to play with. And right. no one's taking that away from them. Right, yeah. Yeah, and it, an inside joke among the engineers who, like, first built the, like, original one was that they might go down in history as the creators of Big Brother, which, like, that seems like a very real possibility that they're going to go Why down would you in even history. joke about that when they know for a fact that's exactly what they're doing? Right. Yeah, I don't know why they would joke about that. But yeah, this technology could be used in any city to track a criminal who, like, committed a crime or to track a terrorist attack from a vehicle. And, like, with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, like, winding down, I mean, now there's other wars but some of the companies who develop the various cameras have been pitching a smaller version for local law enforcement to be used here oh i hate this because you know what it's gonna be fucking weirdos watching people yeah who don't know that they're being watched like 
have some